Ma. Ma. Why is it so dark in here? Let's make a lamp. In this video, we're going to explore how HDPE and resin can be bonded together. Since HDPE is commonly used for resin moulds, we know that this is a pretty slippery material. As well as testing to see if this actually works, we thought we'd make something at the same time, so we're going to go with a lamp. To kick things off, we're whipping up a sheet of recycled plastic using our tried and tested method. If you want to know some more detail about our process, we've got a couple of videos on our channel to help you get started. For this one, we've dug into our rare supply of gold tops, but it's definitely worth it because this looks awesome. Because we're going to be pouring resin into this, we need to thickness both sides to make sure it's totally flat and nothing leaks out. Once it's flat, we're cutting them into smaller pieces to make up the four sides of the lamp. We're cutting three slots in each of the panels, which is where the resin will go. Initially, we planned to go for one big cutout on each side, but the black and gold looks so nice that we want to keep more of it on show. And don't forget to save all of that HDPE to use again later. We used our router table to add a chamfer to the outside face of each of those slots. Then we switched over to our secret weapon, a slot cutting router bit. Since we know the resin won't stick to the HDPE, that slot cutter is going to create a groove on the inside which will lock the resin in place. We gave the front face of each of these panels a quick polish using our favourite method, and then it's on to pour some resin. So our friends over at Let's Resin have sent us a nice little care package over to test whether this new technique of combining HDP and resin actually works. Not only have they sent us the resin, but they've also included some dyes and some cool little accessories to try as well. So to go with those flecks of gold in the HDPE, we're going to add some of this bronze mica powder and these little metal gears and cogs to give it a bit of a steampunk look. Right, so we've taped up all of our panels now and it's actually looking pretty good, I think. We haven't done anything with resin in about a year and a half, so I think anything we did know, we've pretty much forgotten. It wasn't very much in the past. No, <laughs> not at all. We should get this mixed, get the mica powder dropped in, and then, yeah, wish us luck. How is this the hardest part of the project? This is ridiculous. <laughs> What are you looking for? Something sharp to stab it with. Scissors, look, scissors right there. Hey. How much is that in weight? That is 322. So close. Ah! Oh, 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 Thick and sturdy. That's, That's how, how I like my resin. resin. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to say on the matter? Not really. <laughs> oh, 
where it's going. Look at that. Wow, that is proper shimmery. Oh yeah, it goes in the slot. That's nice. That's working beautifully. I'm also being sure not to go too high up because I need to leave a bit of space for when the cogs are dropped in as well. So, going to use a quick bit of heat to try and get rid of the top bubbles uh, and then we're going to put the cogs in. Let's see how it goes. So what's next? Cogs. Cogs? Cogs and gears. So we're going to leave these pretty much overnight now and then we'll come back and make sure everything looks cool. What's next right now? Dinner. <laughs> So now that the resin is cured and it's looking bang on, we need to turn those flat pieces into a 3D lamp using plastic welding. We've actually done a whole video on our plastic welding technique, so definitely go and check that out if you're interested. But what it boils down to is melting the edges and squishing them together. We let that fully cool before we remove those clamps and then we hit it with a sharp chisel to remove that squeeze. Any gaps in the joint can be easily filled using a heat gun and a metal scraper. So that's the HDPE part done, and that's effectively the lamp shade, and all we need to do is work out how to get the light inside. We want to keep this fairly minimal so as not to detract too much from the look of the lamp. To do this, we found a scrap of acrylic that we had lying around the workshop. We cut out a couple of squares to fit the top and the bottom of the lamp, and then we drilled holes in all four corners. These holes are for some brass rod, and we chose brass as it was going to mimic the style of the gears and the cogs that we put inside the resin. Before attaching all the parts together, we wanted to frost the acrylic using some high grit sandpaper, and then we used some two-part epoxy to glue the columns into those holes. This gives a perfect little platform for the light to sit on, and we tried one set of these LED string lights and it wasn't quite bright enough, so we decided to add a second. Ideally, we would find something a little bit more powerful, but we just used what we had on hand. The last thing we did was that we took some sandpaper to the inside of that resin face just to give that a little bit more of a frosted look as well as we didn't want to see the LED strings through the clear panels. So let's take a look at how it looks all put together. So there you have it. Turns out you can combine HDP and resin thanks to the star of the show, this guy. 
Not this guy. <laughs> what? This guy. Oh yeah, him. This guy. <laughs> the resin is totally locked in place thanks to that groove that we made using that slot cutter. So thanks for watching the video. If you do have a go at anything like this yourself, be sure to let us know as we love seeing what you guys make. And lastly, a massive thank you to all of the Brotherhood members over on Patreon for supporting what we do and keep us making these videos. These guys are amazing. Legends. <laughs> Look at them, Matt. They are, they're legends. Look at them. Absolutely legends. <laughs>